We are back and joined by the actor uh, and humanitarian, William, <laughs> <laughs> William Shatner, who in the interest of bringing us all together has produced this wonderful book which is called Star Trek Memories, William Shatner, uh, now in the newsstands. Uh, I hold it here in my hand. Incidentally, when was the picture of you on the cover of this book taken? This does not look like a recent photograph to me. It, it, it does not, huh? No. Uh, it's, it's a photograph that was uh, taken uh, about a year or two ago. Uh, nothing to worry about, Tom. I, I was doing my metric what, what, what is What is the measuring stick you're using in terms of how long a year is? A, uh, it's a dipstick. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> Are you getting a little giddy after Bill Shatner Day in America? It's incredible. Yeah. I started off at 7.45. Well, I oh, we've been with you all the way. <laughs> 7 o'clock this morning, which is 4 o'clock because I've just come in from Los Angeles. Yeah. 4 o'clock in the morning. And I've been working. I know uh, you have. And, uh, and uh, it's been um, downhill all the way. Do, uh, do you think that if you didn't do all this that this book wouldn't sell? I mean, as I said to you in the break, Bill, this is a win-win. I can't we love you, we love Star Trek. Who would not want to buy this book? I can't take the chance. What if I didn't do it and it didn't sell? Oh, come on. You have that little confidence after all these years? Come on. Well, Please. People love Star Trek. This is the first time I've ever had a, a, a bestseller uh, before it... Uh, I mean, it's really gone over big. See, well, there you go. You mentioned it's number eight on the bestseller list. Yeah. And you're out talking to me and Regis and Kathy Lee. Well, hours I enjoy night. talking to you, I Tom. I know you do. I know I, you I've do. got some home remedies for your pneumonia. Oh, I have something in the medicine chest here as soon as we finish. Fear, in the fear, medicine yeah, chest? Yeah, fear, fear not. Why did it take from 1964, when the pilot of Star Trek was made, till 1966 to get this thing on the air? What was the difficulty that you, Roddenberry, and company had getting NBC to say, okay, we're going to go with this? Well, uh, first of all, I wasn't around. The, uh, well, that's right. You weren't their first choice, were you? Well, the first pilot was made with Jeffrey Hunter. Uh, and they didn't sell the first pilot. So between the time the pilot was made, the time it was up for sale, and the time that it didn't sell was about two years. Then they hired me ultimately, and, uh, and I always thought I was first choice. I mean, the, my legend was always that uh, Roddenberry sought me out in New York City and asked me to do it, and, and, uh, we, which is what my, my impression was, and uh, took me to California to see the old pilot with Jeffrey Hunter in it, and asked me to be in the show, and I said yes. But if you'd make a, you know, lighten up a little here, everybody's taking themselves so seriously. So in effect, that's what they did. And and uh, then we made the second pilot, and that took a year to to make and sell. So I guess that was the three-year period you're talking about. Yeah, wasn't Jack Lord under consideration one time, but he wanted the farm? Yeah, it, that was my uh, my uh, that was the, that what I what I was told on researching the book. That Jack Lord, um, Lloyd Bridges, uh, uh, who else? And, of course, Jeffrey Hunter, who was not fired but uh, uh, demanded a lot and finally uh, was, asked not to, was not asked to come yeah, back. Yeah, but what's the story you tell, that Jack Lord wanted 50% of the show? That's what I was told. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It turned out to be the biggest break for you in the history of the world, you know. Uh, well, uh, I, I wonder what would have happened if Jack had played it. Yeah. First of all, it would have been made in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, right. There would on have the been big palm island. trees on the Starship yeah, right. Enterprise, right? <laughs> to go where, uh, boldly where uh, Jack Lord has trod before, I guess. <laughs> where Jack Lord has never gone before, right. <laughs> you write in this book that you learned after all was said and done that the 79 episodes of the original show were over. That you found out, and I found this hard to believe, that there were members of the cast who, who didn't say this to you at the time of, 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 the, of the filming, but they weren't your biggest fans, that you were not, you, you wouldn't have won a popularity contest on the set. Is well, that fair? that with certain people, I, uh, that came as a shock to me. I, I, was, um, I was under the impression we were all one big happy family with an occasional outburst uh, from people who, who uh, at, uh, where I wasn't present. Right. And uh, I had no idea what they were talking about, and uh, I pushed it aside as though it was a, a family member who was... Um, who was uh, uh, upset about something. Well, listen, there are always creative tensions on the sets of shows where, you know, egos are ticking, and now and again there is a, there is a, a point of departure between people, but you patch it over and go forward. That's so, happened to you, all Thank you, Tom. Of us. I wish I had said it in exactly yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, but you've said it for me. Well, I, so, I, I had to since you didn't. <laughs> no, I, I was stumbling, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a sore, it's a sore subject. Yeah. So I find, found myself researching the book and, and uh, talking to uh, a cast member, and... Uh, and I was, uh, had a good interview, and uh, 
And I was putting my equipment away, and uh, she said, uh, don't you want to hear how much we despise you? <laughs> and I said, no. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> no. By the way, by, 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 by the way, William, we hated you. <laughs> so I, I was aghast, and, uh, and, uh, and then they proceeded to tell me that at times I would say, no, no, cut that line, and it's not good. And, and it was their one or, you know, they had very few lines to, to say. And every time I said, no, let's do something else, it was, seemed a direct slap at them, which, of course, I didn't have in mind, but I was concentrated on the quality of the show, I, I thought. Um, so. Would it, in retrospect, be fair to say that maybe you weren't as sensitive then a, as you might be now to the oh, fact I that think. when you say that line's no good, you're, you might be taking an actor's only line exactly. of the, of the, of oh, the part I, away? I think it's eminently fair to, eminently fair to say that. Uh, and... Uh, and I would approach it uh, more, being more politic uh, now and older. But one of the things that I found in doing the research on the book was that I knew people uh, very little. I, uh, only in a very superficial way had I made contact with people during three years of doing Star Trek and even in the movies. With Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly, with whom I was, uh, I, I was in their presence uh, much more often, I was... Uh, much more friendly with them, and, right. and, and with Leonard Nimoy, I consider him uh, one of my dearest friends. But with the others, it was it was uh, it was a acquaintanceship, really, and uh, and with many of the people behind the scenes. And in my research, going back and talking to them, and listening to what they said, and and reaching out for them as a human being, and realizing that the clock is ticking, people have died, and there's not that many years left for everybody. I wanted. Wait a second, Bill. Don't say that. <laughs> well, uh, Tom, uh, the the gray hair is uh, is a sign. There's uh, snow on the on the thatch. Is what, what do they say? There's snow on the roof. Just because there's snow on the roof doesn't mean there isn't fire in the hearth. Well, the fire is your feelings, pneumonia. If you want to start comments on hair, <laughs> <laughs> want to start hair comments? No, 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 no comment. All right, you're tough. You're let tough. me uh, let me ask so, you. So, so I just to finish that. Oh, okay. I, I, I wanted to say that I yeah. reached out and I was able to uh, touch someone. <laughs> and uh, and 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 make friends with some of these people that I didn't really know low those many years ago. So you are no longer despised. Well, I don't know. Uh, I may come up with uh, another surprise on another book. Uh, one thing that surprised me, and you wrote very candidly, uh, and I've only got a minute here, so we'll probably have to save your your response to this until after the commercial. But that was your relationship with Gene Roddenberry, which, if my memory is correct, you described towards the end of your book as not being one of great warmth and camaraderie right. during the filming of the shows. And that even through the years up until the time of his death, uh, and if I'm misquoting you here, please, uh, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm taking medication for this damn cold. Well, you always were dizzy. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I To blame the that. medication at this point in your okay, life. Now, if you want to start no, no, attitude comments, I'll be happy to do those no, no, with you're you, tough, too. You're tough. <laughs> uh, but that you really never made the peace with Roddenberry up until the time of his passing. Correct. Correct. All right. Let me talk to you about that, and then we'll get to folks who are on the toll-free exchange. By the way, gang, we have the Star Trek quiz here, questions about all kinds of stuff in Star Trek, so if you call in here, uh, expect to be challenged about your Trekkie knowledge. We'll continue with William Shatner, who's the author of Star Trek Memories, and you on the toll-free exchange. We'll be right back from Fort Lee and Burbank after these messages. Here they come. This is CNBC. We're back with William Shatner, who is the author of Star Trek Memories. Bill joins us tonight from the studios in Fort Lee, New Jersey, where he has been uh, back making appearances there with uh, Regis and Kathy Lee and Conan O'Brien and others on behalf of this book and Star Trek. Talk to us here about, uh, about Gene Roddenberry. Uh, who, uh, of whom, by the way, you write uh, 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 very complimentary in oh, the yeah. opening chapters when the show was getting off the ground. But your personal relationship? Well, it was, uh, it was just one of those things, a, a working relationship, which never really matured, and there was enough time to do that. And uh, I don't know why. I just always had the impression he didn't, uh, he, he didn't care for me and didn't care uh, uh, too much for uh, some of the members of the cast. And but at one point you sought out Major Roddenberry, his widow. Did, did you not? And oh, I, I did an extensive interview with her, yes. And she talked about, and I wish you'd tell the folks, her, her theory about God the Creator, 
and you members of you, the cast. You picked up on that. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's true. So, we Well, like, un unlike some of the other people that you've been with today, I come rather well prepared to this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Your producer has read the book and synopsized it. No, that's not know. quite true, sir. <laughs> The truth of the matter, you're, you're astutely uh, uh, pointing out uh, uh, a thing that uh, th that was one of the more astonishing discoveries I made in writing the book. Um, Gene apparently felt a not only a proprietary uh, interest in the uh, in the uh, in Star Trek, which he, obviously he should because he invented it, but he felt a paternal uh, feeling towards all the uh, actors and the people uh, who uh, were there. Even perhaps more than paternal, he felt uh, a, 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 a feeling that they belonged to him and, the, and we owed him uh, a great deal. And I suppose we did, but somehow it doesn't translate into and, a... And that maybe in his mind you weren't paying sufficient homage or, or demonstrating sufficient gratitude for the creation that he had given to you. I believe that to be true, uh, although Majel... Uh, his wife uh, would probably argue it. In any case, uh, she said to me that uh, that uh, Gene felt that he was uh, the creator and uh, the god figure of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. And and then I realized that that was probably what made me withdraw. That attitude was probably what what instinctively made me withdraw. Why did you feel it necessary? Uh, since Gene Roddenberry has passed on, to uh, allude to his illicit love affair. Well, I didn't think it was necessary, but well, you put it in. Yes. Well, I thought it was part of the show. It was part of the uh, entirety of the of the story of what made Star Trek go, because everybody that became involved with Gene became involved. Uh, with uh, Star Trek. I shouldn't say everybody, but people I knew that were involved with Gene were also involved with Star Trek and had an influence on Star Trek. My ambition with this book was to tell the truth as I saw it in the making of Star Trek, and there were people that have never been mentioned, or mentioned so rarely that they have been forgotten. Not only that, like, he, like Gene Kuhn, uh, a producer in the first half of the first season to the second half of the second season, set the tone for Star Trek, was the uh, writer uh, uh, of record uh, of many of the best episodes. Fair, fair. But then if we're going to allude to the, to the, uh, the trysting of Gene Roddenberry, should we also not then list the peccadillos of all involved who, who well, may have had extra There's a wonderful love story that I tell about Gene Kuhn, who left his wife to to meet with and be with the woman he ultimately married, who told me the story. Uh, I don't think it's wrong to tell the fleshed out details of somebody's life, not in a, in a malevolent way. No, you, it's not vitriolic, but I, you know, I know Majel Roddenberry. Um, and, and, and until today, I have never thought about asking her to come on this show, but I, th I think I may do that at some point, because uh, she and I have been friends for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and as has her husband. Uh, been a friend to me. And I just wonder, sitting in her home tonight, uh, you know, I don't know if she watches this, but I'm sure she's picked up your book. I mean, what must she think now when you write this story that her husband uh, had an extramarital affair? Well, she's not been loath to talk. I mean, she, she's not been loath to talk about it. She, she has expressed herself many times uh, as to what sh position she was in. But not in, for all of us to read. Well, for a lot of us to hear in public. Uh, and spoke to me very openly about it in an interview. I, I am expressing nothing that wasn't there, uh, spoken to me uh, uh, openly and uh, without any uh, hesitation. Uh, the book is researched very, very carefully, and I was very careful to quote people uh, exactly as they spoke to me, gave them uh, things to sign, papers to sign, uh, releasing the, the words, sent the okay. book in its galleys to them to look over. So uh, I, I was very, very careful and very, very uh, uh, desirous of pleasing the people who spoke to me so openly. I understand, but I had to ask, and I appreciate your answers. Let's go to the phones. We're with William Schaffner, uh, Schaffner Chatner, <laughs> trying to it's, change it's, his man's it's the name. It's the medication. It's the medication. Yeah, it's the medication. Here is Chris in Indiana. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, Mr. Shatner, I had a question uh, concerning the uh, cult status that uh, the 
Star Trek has, has, has provided the, uh, the following that you have. A couple of years ago, you did a skit on Saturday Night Live where you kind of made fun of the, the movement that there is for the Star Trek uh, shows. And I was just curious what your true feelings were considering that. Well, my true feeling is one of great empathy, love for the people who love Star Trek, because I too love Star Trek. But I also have a sense of humor about it, and I hope everybody else does too. It is actually uh, uh, a piece of entertainment that was on the air for three years, and we all love it, and we all do our thing with it, but we all have to have a sense of humor about it as well. Are you a big fan, Chris? Oh, yeah. I watch the show whenever I get a chance. I really wouldn't consider myself a Trekkie, though, and then that's what I kind of kind of can't figure out in some instances you, how people really get into that so much that they would uh, be able to, to tell you what you, storylines are and so on. You do not consider yourself to be a Trekkie? Correct. So then you don't know how many original Star Trek episodes there were? No, not an exact figure. Well, there were 79. Write it down. 79, uh, okay. you, you, you might get a call from Letterman some night, and that could be the million-dollar question. Uh, okay. But Chris, uh, Chris thanks for calling. Bill, if you can hold for a second, sure. I have a commercial waiting. Uh, by the way, we're going to turn up the volume on these commercials, folks, so they really blare <laughs> into your house. It, you know, we're going to blast them at you. <laughs> With William Shatner, author of Star Trek Memories, Craig calling us on the toll-free from Ohio. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Pretty good, Craig. Hope you are, too. I'm doing great. You great. Say hi to William from, Shatner friend. right here. Um, you've gone from Quentin Crisp to Captain Kirk. My hat's off to you. Um, Bill, um, when you would deliver those beautiful, uh, impassioned soliloquies as Captain Kirk... Yes, Craig. Um... Did you ever feel... Don't you get snotty with my caller back there. <laughs> Don't you no, give me that yes, Craig. <laughs> those were defining moments as far as I'm concerned. And How much does the line blur between Bill Shatner and Captain Kirk? How much is a what? The line between oh, uh, you uh, as the a line person and those soliloquies. Between the character and the, and the actor? Yes, sir. Well, in any uh, actor and character that uh, an actor plays, the line is um, undefined. Uh, sometimes it's, it's part of your personality. Sometimes you aim to get away from your own personality. In a series uh, where you're doing a show in six days and working 14, 18 hours a day, you don't have too much time to disguise your personality. Uh, you're just saying the lines because you've learned them and trying to put as much emotion and truthfulness into them. So I guess the, the line between Captain Kirk and myself is a very close one. And uh, perhaps if I'd had more time, I would have disguised it more. more, more but in other words, closely. the character and you at some points in time during the production were interchangeable. Yes. Yeah. There you go, Craig. Well, that's great. Thanks a lot. Tom. By the way, Craig, before you run off, are you a Trekkie, a big fan? I'm a semi-Trekkie. All right, let me try this one. Here's the Star Trek quiz. Nobody admits to it. I beg your pardon? Nobody admits to being a Trekkie. I, I want to know what the definition of a Trekkie is. If a guy from some town where in Ohio calls you in Burbank and asks a question about Star Trek, is that not the definition of a Trekkie? I think so. Hey, I'll own up to it. I'm a Trekkie. He's on up to it. See, Craig, that's man. it. Craig, that's good. What episode has Spock saying, you have to kill him, Captain? There's no alternative. <laughs> Craig, I want to I want to I want to I want to tell you I don't even know the answer to that. If you come um, up with the answer to this one. Do you want the answer to that? If you come um, up with the answer to this one. Do you want the title of that episode? That's I'm sort of what I'm looking for, yeah. yeah. That that was that was the episode. <coughs> Excuse me, that was the question. What episode has Spock saying that? I think it was the one where the virus had infected the various uh, folks. Of... No? Not the virus even, had uh, infected the lungs. Not even in the same state, kid. The episode was called Where No Man Has Gone Before. Oh, my gosh. What do you know? Better luck next time, Craig. All right. All right. A box of Mars bars and two tickets to tomorrow night's show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gary in North Carolina. Hello. You're on with William Shatner. Hello. Well, how are you doing tonight, Tom? Good, thanks. And Mr. Shatner, I have a couple of questions for you, but they're not about uh, Star Trek. They're about some other books that you've written. Yes, Gary. I greatly enjoy your tech series. Thank both you. in the printed form and in the comic book form. Thank you. And I was wondering uh, 
is there another one getting ready to be out on the market anytime soon? Tech Secret is uh, coming out, uh, Gary, uh, th this month. Uh, and a hard cover. Uh, Tech Vengeance is in soft cover. And on January 19th of uh, this Would there be a video cassette of Tech coming out that we could talk about here? Well, on January 19th. Funny, you should ask Tom. <laughs> 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 on January 19th of 1994. And, uh, hold it, Bill. Do, do we have a picture of that back and forth? <laughs> <laughs> a, series, look. a series of movies begins on, based on those Tech, uh, those tech uh, novels. Mm -hmm. And the first one is Tech War and I, uh, I, I directed it and I produced it and I helped write it and, and I'm, you own I'm even it, acting and you, it. And you own it and you must be extremely wealthy because of it. <laughs> well, Who's play Jake? Uh, well, Greg Avagon plays Jake to a fairly well. He's wonderful in it. And uh, everybody's very excited over at Universal and at, and at Atlantis Films in Toronto and at, um, at my company, Lemley. We're oh, all well, excited. You're all, that. you're all excited, Gary. Yes. And you're excited, Gary. I'm very much, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Since since Gary's excited. Why aren't you excited, Tom? I'm excited. <laughs> it's the medication is calming you down. I can see that. I'm going to show you the medication, okay? I want to okay. tell you, a, a, a listener sent something in here. She brought it by hand to the studio this afternoon. Uh-huh. She, she did not leave her name. Uh-huh. And she said to me, to let me know that you got this, Tom, in appreciation for the many years of entertainment, just hold it up, look at the camera, and say thank you. Okay, let's okay? hear that. Let's see that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a cable show. I, I'm sure. Oh yeah, we can cable. do anything we want here. <laughs> right. Gary, thanks for calling. Thank you. All right. Good night, sir. Uh, on MTV, did you ask them about Beavis and Butthead? Do you, do you know about this? Well, sure, I know about Beavis and Butthead. Well, I mean, we all do, but it's everybody so knows about Beavis and Butthead. But I think it's it's so stupid. It is a stupid thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is the stupidest, dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, and of course it's making millions a year. Yes, even that's stupid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, can you, can you imagine guys wanting to be called Beavis and Butthead? No, I mean, uh, Butthead's not so bad, but Beavis. Beavis, yeah. <laughs> 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 Jimmy in Kentucky, hello. Hello, Mr. Shatner. I've uh, heard that you have a horse farm here in Kentucky. Up I in do. Lexington. I do in Lexington, Jimmy. Uh, I have a saddlebred farm. We breed uh, saddlebreds there. Uh, and I ride them. And I had one fall on top of me <laughs> <laughs> six weeks ago. <coughs> and I'm just recovering. Do you have any uh, Kentucky Derby hopefuls? Well, these are saddlebreds, not thoroughbreds. Uh, running horses are, a lot of people love them. I prefer uh, American saddlebreds, which are show horses. Thanks, Thanks for calling, Jimmy. Here. Uh, beg your pardon? I was going to ask if he spends very much time in Kentucky. Oh, I do. I spend uh, a great deal of time. I, I consider it my second home. I, um, I uh, have a farm outside of Lexington. Beautiful country. Jimmy, Thanks. I'm glad you called. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right. right. Here is a, by the way, you were on an episode of The Larry Sanders Show. Remember when you did that uh, with yeah, uh, yeah. with uh, Gary Shannon a couple, two, three years ago? Yeah. And they were talking to you about coming on and doing something about Star Trek, and you said, you know, I'd rather do something um, on the tech series or something else. Uh, right. You know, I talk about Star Trek all the time. There is another dimension to my life. How uh, reflective of reality was that statement? Um... Well, or was it, or was it satire with with the cable television? Well, it was satire because yeah. it was a comedy, but yeah. a, 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 and uh, so we were trying to get some laughs. But the truth of the matter is that you and I are talking about Star Trek because I'm promoting this uh, book that I think is interesting, called uh, Star Trek Memories. But there is another series of book books called uh, under the generic term Tech War, and a comic book called Tech World. Yeah, you based. mentioned all that stuff before. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the way, well, it's, know, interesting, it's, it's interesting, you know, when, when, when you talk about your, your, your tech wars and tech books, your voice volume goes up, you know? <laughs> Along with your, your advertising. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, what is that medication you're taking? I can need some right now. But in, in any case, yes, there's another aspect to my, to my life, but we are, I'm on a program, uh, a, a lengthy program all day long of pushing Star Trek memories, and... Um, and so I don't mind talking about it. In fact, I relish it. Uh, we've noticed. <laughs> we've noticed. Um, I thank you for... Well, listen, stay for a few more. I've got three more calls I want to get through here. Can, I, can, I, I would like to. All right. I'll tell you what. Uh, like about six minutes, and then we'll bring William Shatner Day in America to a triumphant and historic conclusion.
only to begin again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Not here. <laughs> we'll be right back with Mr. Shatner and your phone calls after these messages, and then on to the man who chases the tornadoes. This you will not want to miss. <laughs> I can't tell you why. <laughs> I will tomorrow, but not tonight. <laughs> Joshua in Florida, hello. Uh, hi, Mr. Shatner. Yes, uh, Josh. I was calling, uh, I've heard from, from some things that you've done and some other people as well that during the filming of the original series of Star Trek, you had some um, significant experiences, uh, personal experiences in your life. And I was wondering if during the course of writing and researching this, this uh, book that you've written, you have had the opportunity to relive, uh, in a manner of speaking, some of those uh, experiences. Yes, I did. Well, uh, but now what kind of experiences are we talking about here? When, when you, uh, no, but Joshua, when you say uh, personal uh, experiences, like, like. Okay. Um, well, an example would be uh, the the death of your father. I okay. believe took place during That's the right. original series. That's right. That's um, right. Another uh, at the Smithsonian when they had the the exhibit about Star Trek, I had the opportunity to go there with my family. By the way, I'm a, a high school student, and uh, you were talking about a time when uh, uh, you were picked up in a limousine by a, a man who uh, told you about an experience he had had, uh, I guess you said in Vietnam. Yes. And mm -hmm. You said that that was uh, significant to you personally. Yeah. And I was wondering if through the course of doing the book you had the opportunity to... I, I, I did a little exploration, Joshua, I did uh, in those areas. I told some of those stories. Um, the death of my father on one of the episodes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and the, so parts of those, Joshua, are in the book, should you choose to pick it up. Yeah, well, actually, my dad promised me that if I did manage to get through, he would buy five copies of the book, so... Well, know, Joshua, I, so you, you must get through, Joshua. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how pleased I am right now. All right, thanks, Joshua. I'm glad you called, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. You, you know, you, 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 you are naked in your promotion of this book. You, you, you know that. I'm uh, shameless. <laughs> Tire <laughs> in, in fact, the words that we use uh, behind your back are a tireless self-promoter. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> Maybe I should listen to this. What? <laughs> wait, wait when you get back to your hotel and see the replay. <laughs> no, tirelessly self-promoting this book. Tirelessly self-promoting this book. Yes. Well, I'm tired. Of course you are. So I'm. But, uh, but you're tireless. I mean, if you had a chance to go over to NBC right now or go on an all-night radio show, you'd be there right now. I'm you, on my way. You're kidding me. No, I'm kidding you. Um, it's part of the part of the uh, act of writing. I think is is getting the book sold. Uh, otherwise, uh, it yeah. May but, but but like I said, hey Bill, it's already yeah. number eight on the bestseller list. Yeah. How yeah. far out of the ballpark do you want to hit this thing? Um, you know what Carter did uh, in the last game of the, uh, Joe Carter did in the last game of the... Yes, I the, do. He, he, and I don't want to go into it. Why because, not? Because I bet the other way. I was on the Phillies. <laughs> Tough. You yeah. lost again. I mean, I, I, if I didn't know better, I would almost say the fix was in on this one. Tom, I mean, when the guy again. dropped game four... The, when Blue he was Jays, the Blue Jays were a better team. He knocked the ball out of the park. And that's what I'd like to do with uh, these books. Okay. Uh, plural, books. Well, Video. I was talking to you about and, and, and whatever else it is you've got going back there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff.